What's up YouTube? It's your boy Dan out here back in Montreal. It is late January and I'm about to show you what it's like having the real Canadian experience. <laughs> uh, the first thing real about today is Ooh, it feels like minus 11 today, according to my phone when I left. <clears throat> it's actually getting even colder as the day goes on, so it might be minus 12 or minus 13 by the time I finish this video. But... Well, I know that's not that cold for some Canadians out there. You know, some cities... By the way, look at the size of those icicles. <laughs> I know it's hard to tell how long they are, but th that longest one there is taller than I am. Must be about seven feet, eight feet. <laughs> Just incredible. But yeah, as I was saying, now minus 12, minus 13, that might not seem too cold for some places. In fact, even Montreal is getting colder to about minus 20 later in the week. And some Canadian cities, such as Winnipeg, where I grew up, uh, it's not uncommon to even get to minus 30 or minus 35. So I don't say I'm out here in minus 11 to brag or anything, but that is a pretty typical Canadian uh, winter weather, to be honest. And also when it's a windy day like it is today, <laughs> and you're holding out a camera like I am right now, it can get a bit chilly. We've had quite a bit of snow over the last few days. <laughs> so this is a bike path. Next to the bike path you can you can see just how much approximate snow has been dropped this year. Almost a meter of it. Though, of course, some of that is from the snow plows, which have, uh, of course, had to push the snow off the roads and gather it off to the sides. But nevertheless, there has been quite a bit of snow recently, which is why I wanted to take you to this park and give you a little taste of what life is like. Here in Montreal. Actually there's been so much snow it's not that hard to jump this fence so just gonna hop over that and I'll show you one nice thing about this park in winter time which is that we have Hockey rinks. It's three of them actually. One, two, and there's a third one way down there. First, let's say hello to this guy. Who's taller? About the same actually. I, if I stand down here, I think he's got me beat. <laughs> but if I come from the other side, I might, I might have the edge. Don't you love the sound of uh, boots in snow? 
<laughs> Actually slipped a bit. We're good, we're good. So yeah, these are public public hockey rinks, skating rinks, you could I could say. Open from 8 a.m. to 7.30, seven days a week. Maximum 15 people. Permitted free skating and you can play hockey with up to eight people. Now, by the way, 7.30, that might seem a bit early. If you're wondering why, you know, why do people have to stop playing at 7.30? Why can't you play till 8 or 9 or 10? That's because there's actually a curfew going on in Quebec right now. Which means that everyone has to be home by 8 p.m. You can't be on the streets, you can't be shopping, you can't be driving. Um, I literally can't go walking outside down my own street at 9 p.m. or I risk getting fines of thousands of dollars. So, uh, you know, I'm sure wherever you are, obviously, COVID is a big deal. I'm just gonna... Just gonna come onto the rink for a little bit. Hopefully I don't slip and <laughs> break my head open as I make this video. You like my, my uh, moonwalk? But yeah, long story short, we have a curfew in Quebec for the next four weeks. So everyone has to be home from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. Uh, yeah. It is what it is, I guess. But uh, that's why the rinks have to close at 7.30. In other news, speaking of uh, things that have been closing, some of you know I was in Mexico very recently. Uh, and I haven't, if, if you're wondering like how I got from Mexico back to Canada and what, what's going on with all that stuff, uh, I'm going to do a video update coming very soon. I actually have a lot to say about that. So if you want to know the story of why I'm back in Canada and what, what it's like traveling in Mexico recently, uh, I'll have a video about that on my other channel, The New Travel, to kind of update people. And if you if you do know my channel, of course you do know that I uh, yeah need help. Yeah, sure. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it over. There you go, buddy. All right, thanks, man. No worries. So I'm struggling to get the hockey puck back there, so decided to give a hand. But as I was saying, if you do know my channel, if you do know anything about who I am, then you'll know that uh, I don't take this COVID stuff lightly. I have been doing everything I can to follow health precautions and uh, so I, of course, I quarantined for two weeks when I got back in Canada, um, which meant, like, you know, I, I couldn't leave home for two weeks, which was a bit challenging. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's a tough time to travel. It's a tough time for a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. But uh, I just mentioned that because 
I think especially these days, there's sort of a growing anti-travel movement. A lot of people are getting upset at people for traveling during this time. Uh, perhaps that's also a subject I should cover in another video, if you guys want to hear my thoughts on that. But for today, as I start freezing my face off, well, the face cover is going up. Might even, might even wear the hood for a little bit. Of course, it wouldn't be Montreal without a little bit of graffiti and vandalism. <laughs> Lots of that in this city as well. But yeah, mostly I just wanted to give you some feelings of what this park is like with all the snowmen, the fresh snow. And this, have you guys ever seen one of these? Oh, that is like, <laughs> okay, this is, I guess this is the entrance to the fort, but if you guys see how big I am compared to this, I guess it's like, this is like a kid's way of saying no adults allowed because I, I, I couldn't make it through there if I tried. It's pretty tiny. <laughs> but guess what kids, there is something else you probably didn't count on. Okay. <laughs> That's how the that's how the big kids make it into the fort. It's a pretty nice one actually. Hopefully you can see it. I know it's very white on white with the snow in the background and the snow fort in the front, but uh I think it's pretty cool. Okay. When I was a kid, I'm talking like third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. My favorite thing to do in winter time, everyone's favorite thing to do in winter time actually was to build snow forts. So, you know, the third graders would have a snow fort, the fourth graders would have a snow fort, the fifth graders, the sixth graders, we'd all have our own fort. And, um... Oh, compost the police. Well, at least they're being... At least the anarchists are being uh, environmentally friendly. So yeah, we'd all have our own snow forts. And when you were a fourth grader or a fifth grader, you had to really be careful because the sixth graders, oh, they were such jerks. They would go out of their way and try and destroy the forts from the younger kids. Like after school, they would come and they would, you know, they would kick them and they would punch them. And they'd just destroy them. They were, they were barbarians, terrible sixth graders. I'll never forgive them for what they did to our forts. But we learned a very valuable lesson as fourth graders, a lesson which I'm about to share with you to give you some uh, pro snow building tips. And the lesson, if you ever wanna make your snow fort last, is a couple days after building it, or maybe not a couple days, but just sometime after you've built it, like here's a half finished fort, right? I'm, I'm not trying to destroy it. I'm just trying to, you know, show, see how strong it was. Uh, that, that one, you know, it's not too bad, but like if I really wanted to, I could just kick it and break it. But what you can do 
is if you take water bottles and you pour like water over the snowballs it will freeze and then you have frozen ice which when the kids try to kick it it'll just stub their toe it, it won't break it'll be like a giant chunk of ice and uh, here's a nice one a oh, very round okay so yeah once you freeze your snow forts that's like insurance against the sixth graders and all it really costs you is a few bottles of water so uh, that's the kind of winter tip that you can only get here on the new travel just gonna show you a few scenes of uh, the houses near the park They also look very, very pretty on this winter day. It's a baseball. I was about to say baseball stadium. It's not a stadium, but baseball field. In the summer, there's also a swimming pool, outdoor pool, that's obviously closed at this time of year. But yeah, it's a pretty nice park, Park Laurier. You see that guy over there? You see a lot of people think that hockey is the national sport in Canada, but it's not. The national sport is actually cleaning snow off your car. That's one thing that we all know pretty well. Yeah, I was about to say there's not too many people in the park, but actually there's certainly a few. And this is a, a weekday, so if it was a weekend, there'd be even more. And if it was a bit warmer, there'd be even more as well. There's always some brave souls out there on bicycles, no matter how cold it gets. Sometimes when it snows a lot, or when it's windy, uh, the old trees will break down and either the, the force of the wind or even just the weight of all the snow sitting on top of them will break some tree branches. And I'm guessing that's what happened there. Look at the size of this snowball. Not bad. This is really cool too. I only discovered this a couple days ago. Uh, this is more ice 
So this is a skating path. And because it just, uh, just snowed today and not many people have been here, uh, it's actually not so easy to see the skating path. But yeah, obviously there is one down there. It makes a little loop. I was just waiting for the uh, <laughs> waiting for the skater to come over so I could show you that. Ah, now some of these snow sculptures were actually really cool, but they've kind of broken down or just kind of been neglected. Like this guy, can you see? Yeah, that guy's lost his head, unfortunately. How's that? Ah. Now I need to deal with snow in my hat. probably wasn't worth it for that little joke that I'm sure no one laughed at. Okay, let me just put down my camera. Okay. Oh man. Of course, now I got snow on my camera too. <laughs> going from bad to worse over here. But yeah, here's another interesting <laughs> sculpture that unfortunately... was in better shape about a week ago, I bet. Now on the one hand, this is a pretty typical Canadian park. You know, you got a lot of snow, you have benches, you have trees, a few snowmen. But I would say with the number of snowmen you have here and the skating rinks and everything, this is a... This is like a next level park. Like not all of them have this much to see in a close area. So yeah, I really like this park and of course, it's nice to see that even the snowmen have uh, decided to wear their protective masks. And I must say, they're pretty well socially distanced as well. 
<laughs> what's this? Is that, I guess that's the, that's the coronavirus, huh? <laughs> Is that why you're wearing a mask there, buddy? Uh, actually, I should probably, should probably step back from that since, uh, you know, I already did two weeks quarantine. I think that was more than enough. Here's another snowman. What's he, what's he got to say? This is a big one. Don Avenir Vafondra Osi. That means your future will also melt. It's a bit of a powerful message from a snowman. Of course, he will one day melt. Give a shout out to the creators. That's Likotek, El Likotek. I'll guess that's an environmental organization. Maybe they're the same people who are composting the police. I don't know. Probably not. My hood's going back up. Up to almost 30 minutes on this video. Which means... I have an excuse to be getting cold because... Yeah, unfortunately these gloves aren't too thick. And since I need to hold my camera out to film this, my fingers are becoming frozen fingers. Frozen chicken fingers. With barbecue sauce. What am I talking about? I don't know. I think I'm just hungry. And I have some chicken fingers in the freezer that I haven't eaten yet, so... Yeah, pardon me if I get a bit distracted. Sometimes. <laughs> But yeah, this is it. This is winter in Canada. This guy's seen better days. I do love this park though. It's nice in autumn when all the leaves are changing color. It's nice in spring when all the all the birds come out. It's nice in summer when this place is just packed with people drinking their beers, having their barbecues, throwing around their frisbees. And even though winter is definitely the quietest time of year, it's nice to see how uh, people still find ways to enjoy it. With the skating, with the snowmen, with the forts. And also just with enjoying the nature, you know? very important for us to get into nature it's something I struggle with personally I mean e even for those two weeks when I was stuck inside I, I could feel my body just getting lazier my body was you know by the end of it 
I thought I'd be so excited to go out, but I, I wasn't. I was just like, well, whatever. Like, this is normal now. I just stay home, you know. Especially when it's cold out, you just think, well, I'll just, I'll just stay home every day. But you really got to force yourself to be outside and take it all in and. Just remember what that, what that natural world feels like, looks like, tastes like, I don't know. I guess if it's snowing, you can taste it, but. I probably should have stopped it looks like. It's a local grocery store. <laughs> they still got their uh, Christmas decorations up. I was actually just going to show you the the park, but now that I'm out here, maybe I should just keep walking. This is kind of cool too, isn't it? Showing you the the local neighborhood. That's another very common sight in uh, winter time. <laughs> uh, having a snow brush for your car is very essential and having a shovel as well. Because sometimes, I mean it's not too bad right now, but sometimes you get like two feet of snow and you need to start digging before you can get out in the morning. So, I, I don't drive at the moment. I used to drive, but I don't, I don't own a car anymore. Because I have been living that travel life so much, I've never really needed a car. But for the people who do have cars, <laughs> I sometimes see people uh, digging their car for like 15, 20, even 30 minutes just to get out in the morning after the snow plows have gone by and pushed all the snow into their cars. So I do always feel a bit... <laughs> well, it's a mixture. I feel a bit bad, but also I... I sometimes can't help but laugh. I mean, let's be honest, the car owners, when they see me walking down the sidewalk on a cold day and they get to drive by, Well, that's their chance to laugh because they're in the nice warm car, you know. They got their music playing, they, they're all happy and warm. But, 
when I look outside and I see them having to shovel their car out, you know, that's my turn to laugh. This is the, uh, you know, I pointed this out in a video uh, last winter. Uh, this is like the not so pretty part of Canadian winter. Snow looks beautiful when it's just dropped but it doesn't take too long before it's just slushy and muddy and it's getting stains on your clothing and uh, <laughs> that's the part that you don't see on Instagram pictures or that's the part that people will tell you about. Oh, there's that wind again. Another little trick for you guys if you're ever coming to a winter climate. It might look silly, but sometimes just walking backwards against the wind, it really does help. Uh, <laughs> of course, you gotta look sometimes to see where you're going, but that wind to your face can make it seem about 10 degrees colder than it would otherwise. So if you're not walking directly into the wind, you're doing a lot better. There you can get a nice view of one of the older buildings in the city. Well, maybe not one of the older ones in the city, but in this neighborhood at least. Academy de SSAs, I guess it was a school. And of course, there's a nice old church as well. Come to think of it, maybe the school and the church are like, maybe it's a Catholic school. Uh, so maybe they're connected in some way. If anyone's watching who knows their Montreal history, feel free to hop in in the comments and let us know. Now I'm just aiming my camera this way to give you a nice view of some of these uh, beautiful red brick homes. I mean, there's nothing particularly unusual about these ones. We do have a lot of apartments like that in Montreal. But you know, I do think they are quite nice. And at this point, I think I'm gonna wrap up this video. We've been going for about 45 minutes. Uh, got to show you what the park is like, got to show you what the streets are like. Yeah. 
If you're still watching, don't forget to leave a like so that uh, the YouTube gods know that you're out there. <laughs> And also, don't forget to what else should you not forget to do? You know, it's actually it's been so long since I've even made a video. I forget what to do. I forget how to do these things. Maybe I should just stop talking and Stop talking and give you some more of the scenes. That was pretty cool seeing the snow plow go by with some uh, some kind of de-icing machine in the back. Someday I'd like to do a video all about the, the snow removal system in Montreal because it's really uh, fascinating how they do it, especially after a big snow snowfall. You just got all these huge trucks and all these plows and uh, <laughs> there's, there, there's, there's some things that you can definitely complain about in Montreal, like the, the road construction is slow and uh, there's there are some problems but the snow removal I think is like I would never complain about it I think they do a really great job and uh, yeah as you can see I've just circled back I'm gonna end the video my lips are getting cold. <laughs> oh. But I hope you guys have enjoyed watching it from somewhere warm at home. And this is giving you a little taste of what it's like in a real Canadian winter day. See you next time, guys.